Okay, everybody, hello, and we're going to be looking at how to solve for some circuits. Uh, I told you I was going to look at this in two different ways. So let's start off with the way that you're probably used to doing. So we're looking at the circuit, and I'm being asked to find out what is the current of this circuit. So a few things. First, we realize that this is uh, the battery here, 16-volt battery. Uh, that means this is the positive, this is the negative, which means my current is running along that way, running along, running along. Now, uh, one thing to remember with currents in a circuit is uh, provided that I don't split off into two different uh, directions, the current should be the same everywhere along that single line. And that's pretty important. That means that the current going through this resistor is the same current going through this resistor. So the way you're used to doing this is that you would say, well, voltage is equal to I R. And in this case, I have two resistors in a row. Now, um, they're, they're in a row, but sometimes we call that in series and you'll used to you'll get used to me saying that uh, this is what we call a series circuit they're one resistor after the other that that means in series so in this case uh, I know my total voltage given to this entire circuit is 16 volts and that will be equal to whatever the current is times the total resistance and I guess at this point you probably already know what to do in this case. My total resistance is nothing more than each resistor added together. So in this case I've got 8 ohms. A total of 8 ohms by plus 3. So therefore it's pretty, it's pretty basic math here. So we're saying that my current in this case therefore, therefore my current is equal to the total voltage, 16 volts, divided by 8 ohms, and I got myself 2 amps. No problem. So I got 2 amps here, and I got 2 amps here. Now this is the, the way that you're used to looking at it, so we'll call this, uh, let me see, up here we'll call this uh, uh, method 1. And now what we want to do is we want to talk about doing this a different way. So let's call this uh, method two, and uh, we'll call it uh, Kirchhoff's law. This is the second method. And at first you're going to say, well, this seems almost worse than the first method. This looks like it doesn't help me at all, but trust me, this is something you want to know. Uh, so what is Kirchhoff's Law? Kirchhoff's Law is basically that if I take um, the voltage drops or voltage rises anywhere along a circuit and I add them all up like this, da, 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 the total of any loop, of any loop, any loop. Now remember when we were looking at all the different types of loops I can get in the circuit. I am serious, any loop, the total voltage added together should be equal to zero. So, let's see how that works. By the way, someone in my apartment is drilling, so you hear a drill in the background. I am so sorry. What are you going to do? So let's look at the, uh, let, look, let's look at the sum of all the voltages. All right, sum of the voltage drops. First, I'm going to start at uh, some point, so I'm going to start right here at this point, and I'm just simply going to move along. Here I go, I move along, and so I'm moving with the current. This is this is kind of important. So I'm moving with the current, which means I am looking for a negative or positive voltage drops. Now this is going from a negative positive. This is actually the battery, and the battery is giving me a positive 16 volts. This is this is the first part. I get positive 16 volts. That's the first. Point. So there's my first point right along there. Then I continue along. I keep going along my loop. And voila, I got this guy. Now that is going to be equal to a voltage drop because it's a resistor. It's going to be taking energy away. 
And so I'm going to have a negative. Now, what is the bootstrap here? Well, it's nothing more than IR, just like we said above. And in this case, uh, the R is going to be 5 ohms, so we'll just go IR1. And then I continue along again. And then I hit the other resistor, and that'll be another drop because it is dropping in the same direction as the current, so I R2. You're saying, oh my god, what a lot of work. But like I said, trust Mr. Gale once in a while. He will bring you good news. Okay, so, and then I get back to the beginning. So I'm at the beginning, which means this total thing must be equal to, that's right, zero. So what do I got? Notice I'm saying it's the same current in both cases. This is not going to be the case when we get into more complicated circuits. But right now, it's the same current everywhere. So what do I got? I'm going to have 16 volts minus I times 5 minus I times 3 is going to be equal to 0. And you're noticing it looks almost identical to uh, what I have above. So what do I got? I'm going to have, um, you see, negative I8, if I can add these together, equals negative 16. So I should, I should make this sort of a capital I there so you don't get confused. It's not a 1, it's an I. I is equal to uh, negative 16 over negative 8. This is equal to, yes, 2 amps, just like I had above. Now, you're looking at this going, wow, this is a ridiculous way of doing this. Once again, you're going to find that sometimes this method above, method 1, is not going to work for you. So you will want to remember Kirchhoff's Law. So this is the two methods. Hope this helps. Uh, take a look at it one more time. See if uh, nothing else uh, confuses you. And then uh, by the time we talk again, after we finish building our speakers, you're going to have uh, much more complicated circuits to start playing around with. So, talk to you then. Bye-bye.